panic in the White House. Let me tell you, right down to the rank and file, we are hearing through the grapevine, the people are actually worried about this. They're really, really worried. They're worried about what it's going to mean for Joe Biden because apparently his son is really not a stable person, not a stable person at all. We're going to get to that in a second. They're wondering what it means for their jobs. I mean, look at poor KJP. She's never been a rocket scientist, but this is like really swimming in the deep end right now for her. And she's swimming upstream. Heck, she's got a president that doesn't even want to do his big year-end press conference. It's like kind of a tradition, right? Every year the president comes out and they have like this informal State of the Union. Well, Joe doesn't want to do that, I don't think, so she's trying to walk that one back. Here she is moments ago. Take a look. As we near the end of the year, uh, just traditional presidential things, should we anticipate a year-end news conference? You guys just, he just did a press conference. He had a coaster. We got a co-star. Okay. <laughs> took two questions. No, he took more than two questions. There were four. There were there were two for plus American two. Press. Okay, for American press. Look, guys. Um, I. I <laughs> you said it, not I. Ed. Um, look, it, he did a two plus two uh, on Tuesday. Gosh, the week is going by really fast. On Tuesday with uh, yeah, right. President Zelensky, you heard the president uh, speak speak very uh, passionately and important uh, in an important way about the. His, the, the way forward with the foreign policy, how he wants to move, certainly wants to make sure we continue to aid uh, Ukraine. I don't have anything else to add about a, an end of the year press conference, uh, but the president's going to travel, as you know, on Wednesday. You're going to hear from him today, and so you'll continue to hear from him before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. You know, we did hear from him today, and he still doesn't want to talk about the things that need to be talked about. He's still trying to sell this Bidenomics idea, pat himself on the back for the pharmaceutical industry, this, that, and the other. And yet the meat of the story, the, the questions that the press really has right now, he's doing everything he can to avoid. And so is she. Like, this is her job, right? She's supposed to answer these questions. you got quite a situation going on, and yet she's just trying to shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. Listen to her here. Now, it, the, she was asked, just as the news broke about what impeachment, it's official, right? It's official. They are launching that inquiry. The impeachment inquiry has been launched. So Corinne Jean-Pierre naturally should have something prepared to talk about, and yet we got this. Is the president okay with his son defying a congressional subpoena? I'm just not going to get into uh, into specifics on that. I would have to have to, have to refer you to the president's, uh, 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 not the president, but Hunter's personal personal representatives. He's a private citizen. I'm just not going to get into it. Can you tell us when the last time the two of them spoke? I mean, I'm also not going to get into private conversation that the president has with his family. We've been pretty consistent. That's nothing new. We're just not going to get into it from here. Republicans say that they have to take this vote, formalizing an impeachment inquiry, because the White House is stonewalling them. What's your response to that? The White House is stonewalling the the House Republicans who are been who've been <laughs> who have been really pushing uh, pushing this impeachment without any evidence, that without be doing this political stunt. I mean, that's what they've been doing over and over again. <sighs> Back to the well, those talking points, right? They come in handy. You just keep saying there's no evidence, there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Even though, I mean, hey, uh, there's a lot of financial records that certainly look like evidence to me. Just saying, there is that Devin Archer interview. They're like, oh, well, nobody's been on record. Let me be clear, they didn't bring Don Jr. in on record either officially in front of the tv cameras you get the interview with devin archer who said he was selling the biden brand you've got the multiple financial records you've got all of those emails that started to skyrocket from joe biden's personal account when he was vice president right around the time that he was going to ukraine he started massively sending these emails Allegedly, right, if we're to believe the servers, and I kind of do, from Robert Beware, or rather from the White House, to Robert Beware and multiple other aliases. I'm sorry, don't sit there and tell me there's no evidence. There's a lot of really suspicious stuff, which is why you need the inquiry in the first place. 
And yet this is their MO. This is their MO. You know what? There's just no evidence. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. And this is what they're going to tell us all day long from AOC to the Goldman guy to Jamie Raskin. Take it away. Let's watch the narrative. I have no evidence of him committing, committing any offense, much less an impeachable uh, offense. So, um, Well, it certainly is a formal step where every single Republican who votes for this is endorsing the idea of impeaching Joe Biden. And that's why you have to look at what they have developed over the last 12 months. It is not for lack of evidence, Garrett. They have hundreds of thousands of pages of documents dozens of hours of witness testimony from numerous uh, government witnesses, multiple executive branch agencies under the administration have turned over documents. They have plenty of materials. They just don't have any evidence connecting. And not only is the committee not allowing Hunter Biden to testify publicly, but they have not called a single witness, a single first hand witness to any of their allegations, they haven't allowed anybody to. Yeah, well, guess what? They will. They will. AOC, careful what you wish for. They're going to be calling a lot of them. And you know what? It's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly, which is why everyone at the White House right now, they're so worried. There was a big piece in Politico today. Politico was sourcing five different people who were speaking anonymously on behalf of the president, and they were all saying how worried they were about him because, you know, he's a father and he cares about his son. Let me just say, you know what? You're a father, you care about your son. I get it, I get it, I get it. But you know what? You also don't allow your son to behave in a way that's going to actually wind up possibly leading to him being in jail. I mean, the man act alone. And these, these Republicans are pretty rabid. They're going to go after him. They're going to go after him hard. Can you imagine if Don Jr. did any of the things, any of the things at all, that Hunter Biden is being accused of? If those accusations existed and the quote unquote evidence that was uncovered by Comer and Jim Jordan, et cetera, if any of that existed for Don Jr. or Eric Trump, it would be game over. They would be all over. They'd already be behind bars. So, you know, don't sit there and say there's no evidence. They realize that's one talking point. The other talking point they got to go to is poor Joe, poor Joe, poor Joe, poor Hunter, poor Hunter, poor Hunter, poor kid. Oh, my gosh, they're going after the 50-some-odd-year-old kid. He's not a kid. I want to just keep reminding you all of that. He's definitely not a kid. And yet... This guy is so manipulative that he would actually throw out sort of his mental health and what that might mean for his father and his father's presidency and stability should anybody go after him, Hunter, in such a way that was so kind of evil in nature. I want to play this for you because... When I heard this, I literally, I fell off my chair. I'm like, what exactly is this guy trying to insinuate when he says that the Republicans are trying to kill me and they know that they kill me, they kill my dad. I mean, is he, is he being literal? Because you got to be careful with that kind of language, knowing his past, knowing his addictions, the story and political sites, all these anonymous sources saying they're really worried. The president's really worried. The hunter's going to spiral back into his very, very bad behavior, which actually the behavior was going on really just even quite recently. And we still don't know who was the um, intended recipient of the illegal substances that were found in the White House by the Secret Service, et cetera, that suddenly had no tapes, right? Listen here to Hunter Biden on this podcast with Moby the Musician. He doesn't even challenge him. We got to talk about that, but I want to play this first. It's pretty manipulative. They are trying to, in the in in their most uh, illegitimate way, but rational way, they're trying to destroy a presidency, and so it's not about me. In their most base way, what they're trying to do is they're trying to kill me, knowing that it will be a pain greater than my father could be able to handle. Wow. I 
mean, those are some pretty loaded words, don't you think? I mean, is that some kind of weird warning to anybody that goes after Hunter? He's in this fragile place. I mean, those, I, I, did he mean it metaphorically? Did he mean it literally? Is this semantics? I don't like that kind of language. And then you think about how they're doubling down on it in the White House right now because they're so fearful. They're so fearful about what's to come. They know they get a bad candidate. They know Bidenomics is not working, yet they push it so darn hard. Guys, give it up. Give it up. You know what? The economy's not doing great. When you're spending $7.99 for the cheapest dozen eggs in my local grocery store, no. Like $8 for eggs, I'm sorry. The economy is not doing well. We are still grappling with inflation. So Bidenomics isn't selling. They got a candidate that nobody likes. And now his screw-up kid, who may have been involved, may with the father in a very illicit should be illicit scheme to make money for the family overall. Don't forget, Comer's got records of $24 million being disseminated through these various LLCs to all kinds of family members, all with the last name Biden. That is, except for, you know, the one that he didn't want to pay child support to, all while he simultaneously spent, according to the U.S. government, nearly $700,000 on, quote, various women. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable so he's out there crying poor me poor me poor me joe's like oh poor hunter that is the narrative you will hear that there's no evidence and it's just the mean old republicans going after this poor kid know it when you see it 